guys, it's Halloween Dan. Uh, just another one of my random chats, Halloween related of course. This time it's part two of my spooky stories. Um, and uh, it's another tale I wanted to share with you um, about a ghost event that happened to me. So let's get into it. So this story takes place in 2011. Uh, it's a personal story to me, it happened to me. And it probably is one of the scariest things that ever happened to me, uh, personally. Um, and probably the most ghosty thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, the last story I told was spooky and strange, but at no point did I really feel like I was being followed by a ghost. You know, all the way through it, I was trying to rationalise it. And and it was only afterwards that it felt spooky. This was an event that felt spooky all the way through. Well, part, most of the way through. And it happened in a traditional spooky kind of a ghosty kind of a way. So back in 2011, I was working for the same company I work for now, which is a hardware store. Um... But the thing you need to know about the hardware store I work for is it's kind of like the hub of our community. It's the biggest and oldest shop in our village. Um, it's 140 odd years old now, the business is. And for most of that history, a good 130 odd years of that history, the shop was located in the centre of our village, at the very heart of our community, and was in housed, its location was a big old building that had been there since the early 1700s and the business had been like I say in the same family hands for about 130 odd years before in 2013 we had to move locations because the building was getting a bit dilapidated basically and the family who owned it wanted to retire. Back in 2011 we were still here in this very old property and like most old properties in England that have that kind of an age to them there were ghost stories. People had always said that the place was haunted. As long as I'd worked there, there'd been stories of it being haunted. There'd been just random little things that had happened. People, the most common things were people would say they saw shadowy figures. They'd see shadow figures or something flip in the corner of their eye. Or they'd hear things, disembodied voices and all the rest of it. It was so eerie a place. I mean, it was a lovely place to work and it was had old, oldie world charm. But at the same time, it could be incredibly creepy in certain conditions and if it got a bit quiet. It was so creepy, in fact, that the owner of the business, who the family, it was his family business, he he himself would not stay there after dark on his own. He wouldn't cash up on his own or lock the shop up on his own. He had to have someone else there with him because the few times he ever had done it, he'd heard strange noises that shouldn't have been happening in an empty shop. So it did have a bit of a reputation and there were lots of stories going on. And one of the creepiest parts of the building, this is where it sounds like a traditional ghost story, was the attic. Attics are creepy, everyone knows that. Everyone gets that attics are weird and creepy, right? And this attic was no different. It was very weird, it was very creepy, it was very old. It basically hadn't been touched for the 300 year history of the building itself um it was just what it was and this this attic stretched along the top of the building and was divided into sort of three sections and i often had to go up there i had to go up there quite a lot um because we kept power tools up there and the things i sell are tools um so i'd have to go up there and i'd have to count stock and i'd have to rearrange things and put new stock up there and things like that so I was always up and down this in this attic. And I have to say, for a long time, for many years, I hated going up there. It was incredibly creepy. It was incredibly strange. You always kind of felt like you'd just kind of walked in on a party that you weren't invited to. Like you'd just disturbed something and there were a million different eyes all looking at you. You just had that creepy attic vibe. That was the only way of putting it. And what didn't help was the way you accessed it. You accessed it, we had this sort of sliding door that then led onto a small landing where we kept some more stock. And then there was this kind of half spiral staircase that was really creepy and creaky, creaked ridiculously like something from a horror movie. 
And that was how you would access the attic. So on this particular day when my spooky story takes place, um, it was a lovely sunny summer's day and I was up in the attic counting stock. And as I'm there minding my own business counting stock, um, something happened. Now, the context of this, I suppose, is that by this point I'd worked for this business for roughly 11 years and I had to go up into this attic two or three times a day, if not more sometimes. So there's only so scared of a place you can be. After a while, you get used to it. You're doing your job. It's not a big deal. It's creepy still, but it's, you get used to it. You're just not bothered about it anymore. So I'm not up there on this particular day thinking I'm going to see a ghost. I'm going to sense a ghost. Something's going to happen. I am not thinking those things. I'm just doing my job as I did all the time anyway. And it's at that point, as I'm there counting stock, that I hear, the first thing I hear is a shuffling sound. And the shuffling sound isn't coming from in the room I'm in, in, up in the attic. It's coming from down the stairs on the landing that ran just below the attic. And it just sounded like someone had come down into the landing and was sort of moving about, looking at things, because we kept stock there. So again, I'm not thinking this is a ghost. Oh my God, there's a ghost. I'm just thinking someone's come to get some stock to take back downstairs. It's another member of staff. So I carry on with what I'm doing. I'm just counting stock and myself and I'm sort of busying myself. And then all of a sudden, what I then hear after a minute or two of that shuffling sound is a footstep and a footstep placed upon the stairs. And I knew it was on the stairs because the stairs, as I say, creaked ridiculously. They were so old that it didn't matter how much you tried to not make the stairs creak, they would always creak. But the only way I could describe this footstep that I now heard on the stairs was it was slow and deliberate. And it was done in such a way that someone, if you were trying to purposefully creep up on someone, say you were trying to creep up the stairs and not sort of make too much noise or draw too much attention to yourself, you might try to creep up the stairs and put less weight on every footstep you take. That's how it sounded, because it wasn't a duh, 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 up the stairs. It was just a singular step and a creak. So I hear that footstep, and then I hear another on the next step, another creaky footstep. Slow, deliberate. Now, I'd, again, I don't think this is a ghost. What I think is, this is another member of staff trying to play a trick on me, because... At that moment in time, I worked alongside a guy of a similar age to me and me and him would often have a bit of banter together and we would play pranks on each other quite often. And this particular member staff knew I wasn't a big fan of the attic. I always had to go up there, but he knew I thought it was creepy and a bit strange and didn't really like being up there. So when I hear these two kind of deliberate footsteps... I make the assumption that it's him, that he's coming up the stairs to jump out on me and frighten me. So I carry on counting or pretending to count. I think to myself, I'm going to play my own little trick here. I carry on pretending to count like one, uh, two. <laughs> but the whole time I'm backing now towards the entrance to the attic, towards the doorway. And as I'm doing so, I grab a small canvas bag about so big that didn't have anything in it. And I'm thinking, I'm going to sort of, when I get to the door, I'm going to throw this bag at, at, this, at this guy. So I'm backing towards the door ever slower. And as I am, I can hear these footsteps creaking one step after another. Creep, creep, creep. They're very deliberate, very obvious. There's no way that there's not somebody creeping up these stairs, right? I know that's what I'm hearing, and I know that it's this guy, and I know that I'm going to surprise him, that the trick is going to be the other way around. So I back up, I'm backing up, I'm backing up, and I finally hear, I hear a step just outside the doorway creak, and I know he's practically at the top of the stairs now. I'm thinking I've got, this is my moment now, this is it. I jump out into the stairs, onto the stairs, and I launch this canvas bag straight down at what I assume is this guy who's trying to pull a trick on me. But instead, the canvas bag just flies through the air, 
and lands at the bottom of the stairs and there's nobody there. And I kind of stood in shock and surprise and I suddenly felt like a, a very, like all the hairs on the back of my neck and on my arms all rose up and I felt this sort of tingle of, of shock and I kind of felt a bit sick in that moment, to be honest with you, because it just was such a surprise that he wasn't there. And as I'm stood there in shock, the very last step, the very bottom step of the stairs suddenly creaked, like a really loud creak, as though somebody had just lifted their weight off that step. And I was freaked. I was completely freaked out. And it was... One of those moments where I suddenly didn't know what to do and and I couldn't figure it out. I was trying to figure it out and I was trying to make sense of what had just happened. It all happened so quickly. I think for anyone who has ever experienced anything paranormal, be it big or little, the overwhelming feeling I felt at least was one of trying to make sense of it. It didn't make any sense that no one was there. Why was nobody there? It it was impossible that there wasn't anybody there. I'd heard someone coming up the stairs. I'd heard the footsteps. There was no way that nobody could be there. Oh, and eventually I just, I just turned off the light and I went down the stairs and I left the attic altogether. And I was racking my brains about it. Someone had to have been up there. Someone had to have crept up the stairs. I didn't know how they'd done it because even if it was someone playing a trick on me, even if they had climbed the stairs and then decided to run away from me, I'd have seen them. I'd have heard them run back down the stairs. I'd have seen them run down the stairs. There was nowhere to hide on that landing. So I, it didn't make any sense. But I knew there had to be some logical, rational reason for it. So I spent like the next sort of half an hour to an hour war working my way around every member of staff, particularly the member of staff who I thought was trying to play the prank on me, saying, were you just up in the attic? Have you been up in the attic? Were you trying to play a prank on me? And everyone's answer was, no, no, we weren't up in the attic. And I was like, please, just tell me. I don't care if you were. It doesn't matter if you were. I'd just rather know that you had. Please tell me that you were up in the attic trying to play a prank on me. And everyone was like, no, Dan, we haven't been up in the attic. You were up there on your own. And in fact, the guy who I assumed was the one trying to play the prank on me at the time it had happened, had been all the way out on the other side of the yard, which was ages away, bringing in a delivery. So there was no way he could have been up in the attic. And to be honest with you, that made me feel worse because I didn't want it to be something spooky. I'd spent so much time being freaked out by this attic. And as the years had gone on, I'd managed to sort of reduce that by sort of ignoring a lot of the stories and sort of just getting on with my day-to-day -day business that now that something had potentially happened, that freaked me out. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go back up there anymore. But nothing ever happened up there again. I never heard, you'd go up there, you'd hear creaks, you'd hear strange noises, sometimes things would fall over up there for no apparent reason. But they were things you could rationalize. This moment, this thing of something creeping up the stairs, that I couldn't rationalise. I know what I heard. I wasn't imagining it. It wasn't just the building creaking. It was the sound of footsteps coming up those stairs. So the fact that no one was there didn't make any sense. And the only rational dis conclusion I could come to was that I had experienced something paranormal. And that was scary to me at the time. Uh, so on that note, I have nothing else to say. This is the end of my story. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my last story. I haven't really got any more ghost stories, personal ghost stories to tell, but I am, I do love ghost stories in general, so I might spend the next few weeks maybe sort of talking about other ghost stories that exist out there, the ones that I really like, sort of pique my interest. So anyway, on that note, Thanks for watching. If you get the chance, please give this video a like and please subscribe. That'd be great. And um, keep it spooky. See you later. Bye.